for years, everybody said, many people say, you talk on your cell phone, it's going to get brain cancer, right? But it's, you know, that's an urban legend, except maybe not. <laughs> this is a really good piece, an AOL original piece in AOL Health um, by a guy named Andrew Schneider. He's their senior public health correspondent. want to give him two, full credit. 200 million people in the U.S. Uh, talk on their cell phones a total of at least 12 hours a month. It's remarkable that 200 people, we have that many people who have cell phones, just about everybody. Uh, almost everyone admits cell phones emit radiation when they, when they're, uh, uh, when they link to the closest tower. So the issue is how much radiation. So he says, amid this confusion, a report from health and safety activists, the government cell phone watchdog, that's the FCC, is putting industry desires before public well-being. No. Not possible. Yeah, it couldn't happen. Uh, investigators for a group called the Environmental Working Group, they filed a, a Freedom of Information Act request for documents showing that last year FCC officials met three times, January, June, and July, with representatives of industry groups and corporations, including uh, Nokia, AT&T, Motorola. So the FCC is having these meetings. And interestingly, then in September, uh, things change. The FCC used to have this warning on its website since November 5th of 2009, warning people about their cell phone use. First of all, so it said, consider texting rather than driving, uh, rather than talking, <laughs> texting rather than driving. <laughs> consider, consider texting rather than talking, but don't text, <coughs> but don't text while you were driving. And then buy a wireless device with a lower SAR. Uh, uh, and SAR is, I just looked it up, and now, of course, I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, SAR is, where'd it go? Don't ask me to help you. Um, I do not know the answer. Because <laughs> I was wrong in my guess at what it was in the first place. I just saw it. I just underlined. Okay, here we go. Buy a wireless device with a lower SAR. Now, uh, I know, obviously, Wes, you, you of course, know what an SAR I is. I do not know. Yeah. <laughs> SAR is the value of the specific absorption rate from a cell phone, the amount of radiation you take in. So that's what they had at, since November of 2009. But then it changed September 20th. And remember, they had those meetings mm -hmm. in June and July. Now it says, the FCC's RF exposure guidelines. Accordingly, some parties recommend taking measures to further reduce exposure to RF energy. The FCC does not endorse the need for these practices. So they've already, after meeting with these guys, they back off. And it appears, some would say, part of a, the, at least the beginning part of a campaign to say, Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, let's stop this story mm -hmm. about the dangers of cell phone use before it even gets going. I think we should be studying that. I think we should be studying Wi-Fi. I think we should be studying all this stuff. It relates to what's happening in Japan a little bit, too. Uh, because, well, aside from the obvious radiation issues, but George Bush, the one thing I learned from the George Bush presidency from 01 to 09 was that it destroyed my faith in government. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have had it before, but I did to some extent. Mm -hmm. And now I just flat out don't, and it's not like that evaporated in any way when Bush left office. So when the Japanese say that things are okay at their nuclear sites, which, by the way, to their credit, they're now not. <laughs> yeah. They've told 140,000 people, lock your doors, lock your windows, don't go outside. Uh, they don't know what's happening in the plants. Things are on fire. They don't know the water may be boiling. Uh, and then all of a sudden you're melting fuel rods and it's a catastrophe. And the containers which, uh, which protect the fuel rods, they might be damaged. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. And they say it might be a big deal. But before the Bush administration, I would have thought, oh, stop your alarmist nonsense talk about cell phone use and brain cancer. The FCC is looking into it. They've got experts on it, and they're taking care of it. And now, I'm not, they might, but I don't believe that. Well, and that's a terrible thing to have that totally eroded. That whole world of, like, technocrats and where science was actually funded by the government and really studied, Reagan eliminated all that. It hasn't been around for years, well, it decades. Got, it got much worse under the Bush no, administration. I mean, no, it worries me. I mean, look, we both we both live in L.A. I got I got little kids. I live pretty close to the beach, and uh, you know the radiation would take five or six days to get over here. And I remember when Chernobyl happened. What was that? Eighty six. Yeah. And uh, I was a English teacher in Czechoslovakia right after the revolution. I yeah, I was doing a bunch that. of kids. I was from, doing that too. Were you? No. No. <laughs> A, a bunch of kids came to stay from uh, the Ukraine. 40, 50 kids, they moved there. Mm -hmm. 
and they were all bald. They were really? all like really messed up. And a lot of people in Europe and Poland, Germany and Finland and Scandinavia, even though they told them at the time, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's no danger. They've come down with weird cancers in the last 15 years. The I danger mean, in Japan. It worries me. The danger in Japan is the not knowing what's going mm -hmm. on. And the, like I said, 140,000 people now seal themselves indoors. Look, Can, it's, I'm sure it's terrifying for those people. For me, I'm just kind of concerned because is the government really monitoring it? Right now, the levels of radiation, we can tell that it has been monitored. They're not terrible. The problem is, is that we keep, by day by day, there's no stability there. They don't know what's going to happen next. And I, for their point of view, I, I do like when they say, yeah, we cannot deny the possibility of water boiling. They're not saying it is boiling. They're literally saying, we don't know what's happening, and so we don't know what's going to happen in two hours. Mm -hmm. And things are unstable, and obviously when things are unstable, when you're dealing with fuel rods and nuclear fuel, we don't know what we can prevent. And then it obviously becomes incredible, incredibly worrisome. But no, it's not going to go all the way across the Pacific. What are you, fucking high, dude? It's totally going to go all the way across. Look, the reason you had an increase in cancer rates in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s was because we were blowing off thermonuclear weapons in the South Pacific and in Nevada. The stuff moves. It goes in the air the same way coal dust comes down from China and lands in Wyoming. Well, you're a total bummer. I'm a bummer. No, I, I'm not a bummer. I just think I would, I'd like to know what our country is doing to monitor where the fucking radiation you is over know, the Pacific. You want to know, we hear what... How ja fast it's moving and how much is going to hit us. Japan, well, if nothing else changes, I, I, I'll buy that we have nothing to worry about. But if something, if there's a significant disaster there, and I was watching last night, we're already worse than Three Mile Island, which was minimal... Minimal. ...containment. And it's, so it's the second worst nuclear disaster ever, far short of Chernobyl. But obviously, when they don't know what's going to happen, we could get to that point. Okay, well, you let's say let's say something horrible happens tonight. Could happen. Okay, then we have six days, seven you, days. Before and you want to know, you want to hear from the president, hey, we're on this. We're on it. Right. But what can you do? Well, there's a lot of fucking shit you can do. We've spent a ton of money on defense. And with the Nuclear Regulatory Agency and everything else, they should be able to monitor this stuff, put planes up in the air, put boats out there, find out, like, where it's traveling. I mean... They can monitor the weather. You could so fucking you, monitor radiation. So you want to know from this administration, hey, we recognize this is a problem and yeah. we're, we're looking into and it. And we've got a contingency plan in case and that we know what to tell people in seven days if it's going to come over and what the effects are going to be. And do you need to take, you know, potassium iodine tablets? I mean, what do you need to do? Right, which prevents just thyroid cancer. Like that's a protection when you're exposed to radiation yeah. from thyroid cancer. All right. Well, thanks for nothing, man. I feel great now. No, I'm not trying to bum you out. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't, I'm not saying like panic. I just want to know if this reactor really melts down as bad as Chernobyl, what do we have to worry about here? And like, don't say, oh, we've got it handled. Because what governments do whenever there's a situation like this is don't panic. Don't worry about it. It's covered. Because the thing is, you're going to die of cancer in like 10 or 15 years. You don't need to panic. You smoke, though. so I do. So what do I have to worry about? I mean, I'll be, you know, I'll be dead anyway.